Hello, my dear friends. How is it going? I hope I find you all in good health and safe and sound. I'm Ari Thurger, and today I'm going to answer a question that has been uh, popping up through my patrons quite recently due to the TV series Vikings Valhalla, which lately I've been answering, indeed, uh, questions about subjects that appear in those TV series. So people are naturally taking the opportunity to ask me more stuff about that TV production. I remind you that I haven't watched those TV series, nor do I frankly have any interest in watching it, because I prefer to read books during my very few little pauses from work. But <laughs> at this point so many questions were asked concerning these TV series that I ended up watching a considerable part of it anyway. Well, um, the question is, were there black Vikings? Well, I'm going to indeed answer this, although I think this is a delicate subject. I don't know if it is for you, I don't know how you feel about it, and I'm not going to pretend that I do. However, in my perception, I think it is a delicate subject, and I would like to make a disclaimer first. Don't worry, I'll put time markers on the video so you can skip ahead if you like. Although, I'm going to answer this question right away to save you some time. The answer is no. Now, if you want to stick around to watch me elaborate on this, it's up to you. Now, um, a little disclaimer, if you don't mind. As you know, English is not my native language, so I'm going to use the term black and white for a better understanding, which seems to me to be normalized in English-speaking societies. For my own case, in my own country, Portugal, and society, it is rather weird and rude to refer to people like this, so I too find it strange to address this in such a way due to what I'm used to. Maybe it is really just a question of language and what is normalized in a language, Maybe it really is all right to address people by color in English-speaking countries and societies, and um, such people don't see any harm concerning that. Personally, in my own society, it is not only considered rude to address people by colors, but it is simply fucking weird. Maybe it's a question of translation and the meaning of the words in my own language that makes it weird. Uh, this is not a question of, <laughs> I don't see color. Of course I do. I, I may have uh, eyesight problems due to a couple of incidents and almost losing a left eye due to a uh, sneaky bastard with a shiv, but I'm not bloody blind. It's just, in my own perceptive reality, it's rather strange to address people by color and more so by colors that are not real in people. I mean, why black and why white? if people are not actually black and actually white in color. <laughs> these social colonial constructs, especially these notions of race and color, uh, doesn't actually fit into the reality of things. It just distorts reality, creating an agreed-upon illusion that has become real only through normalization of systems of untruth. White, black, brown, whatever... Uh, uh, is a cultural construct, and people only become these colors if they submit to these same cultural constructs. From an animistic perspective, it just doesn't make sense. So this may not just be a question of language, after all, and what is normalized in a language, but also a question of mentalities. Those who submit and those who do not submit to these cultural constructs it's weird turning people into stereotypes, like a couple of models of an object created massively in industry, and then seeing people like that as objectified, stereotypical, artificial simulations. But as I was saying, in my own country, Portugal has been quite the racist country for several centuries. It, it still is, unfortunately, in many ways, mind you. Um, and we do have several derogatory terms to refer to people's skin colors, but that's not how I was educated, you know. 
but it is also from my own point of view and own understanding, especially through an animistic path, that terms such as black and white are modern cultural, political and religious constructions that further distance people from one another and do not, in fact, address the truth of human existence and consciousness as the, the perception and sense of personhood goes much further and deeper than lazy labels that rob people of their multiple identities. No one is truly white or black, quite literally, or whatever colors are used out there. I'm not blind to people's skin colors and body features and their unique appearances. <laughs> we humans are very visual beings, so we are naturally attracted or drawn to body feature features, to, to the physical. So we see reality, but through subjugation of certain cultural constructs, we refuse to see the truth. It's just that the emphasis on terms such as black and white to refer to people, to human persons, I fail to grasp. And it, and it seems rather strange to me because it's from a particular perception of human societies I don't have. I used to have, mind you, and I have been and I still am a work in progress, surely, but I no longer have it because by engaging with reality and with actual people, instead of closing ourselves in systems of untruth, we get to actually see the sensible existence of lives. But well, black and white CCTs, or is seemingly something normal for English speakers, I shall adopt that sort of expression or language for the sake of a better and straightforward communication. Uh, some may think that my talk is woke as fuck, <laughs> and it's uh, a matter of politics, but I assure you, it has nothing to do with politics. I believe in treating persons with respect and as equals, and that's not politics, that's just basic human decency. And I do feel sad uh, for those who need politics to pretend to be kind. Some need politics and religion to determine their morals. If people can't understand right from wrong, they lack empathy and common sense. Politics and religion won't help them. But let's now get to the main subject, because frankly I'm not living this life for the approval and satisfaction of others. And I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. Well, it has come to my attention through some of your questions, of course, that in the two seasons of the Vikings Valhalla series, which I haven't watched, <laughs> black actors play Vikings, leading to some doubts about the existence of black people in Viking Age Scandinavia. Current uh, anthropogenetic research reveals that this region was indeed a cultural and ethnic mosaic, uh, undoing the image of a totally white place as it has been constructed by models of supremacist ideas. There were lighter of skin and blonder people, of course, but also there were people with darker skin colors and hair. Like all geographies, it has always been a tapestry of varied ethnicities. In Scandinavia, the same thing happened with many people, especially with darker and browner eyes and hair, products of different ethnic crossings between diverse European and Asian populations. But specifically, is there evidence of black Africans' sub-Saharan ancestry in Iron Age ancient Scandinavia? The answer is no. For instance, in literature, the Icelandic sagas recorded several Nordics who were said to be darker than those of their community. But according to the historian Gwyn Jones, a source I will have suggested at the end of this video, most would be references to darker hair, such as the case of Egil Skallagrimson. Likewise, the epithet, often the black, refer to his darker hair and beard, literally being black in color. Other rarer cases when referring to darker skin would have some Asian ancestry, such as the case of Geirmund Heljarskin, Geirmund the black-skinned, son of a Siberian woman, which I have talked about in a video a few years ago, 
And curiously, some people assumed too much based only on the title of that video due to the label black. And without watching the actual video, assumed I was talking about someone of sub-Saharan ancestry, but it was in fact from Siberia. The Icelandic sagas do not objectively point to any kind of case involving sub-Saharan ancestry. Now, the most recent genetic research, such as that uh, carried out uh, by an international team in 2020, examined 442 individuals from Greenland all the way to Europe during uh, or dating from the, the 12,400 before the Common Era to the 1600s of the Common Era. The results pointed to the Sami ethnic group and diverse European ethnicities among Nordics. So the remaining human osteological remains that have been studied point out that people of Northern Europe, especially from the Scandinavian Peninsula and Iceland and Greenland, were indeed people of diverse ethnicities. But none of these cases have shown individuals of sub-Saharan ancestry. There is a possibility that black Africans entered Scandinavia via Nordic slave trade routes, such as those early ones from the Iberian Peninsula. But so far we don't have any historical, literally or genetic evidence to concretely endorse this hypothesis. We have plenty of early evidences of slavery before the colonial period, and not just enslaving black people, but also enslaving everybody people came in contact with and sub subjugated people to their power and will. It's damn light. <laughs> Sorry, this light is failing me. <laughs> now, um, one of the, as an example, for instance, uh, one of the punishments for certain crimes in late Iron Age and early medieval period in Scandinavia was to be enslaved, to be submitted to thraldom. Scandinavians enslaved others and their own. There may indeed be the possibility of people of sub-Saharan ancestry in Scandinavia during the so-called Viking Age, through the slave trade. But that's the thing. As horrible as this sounds, sounds and, and as it is, slaves were considered property and not seen as actual people. So when it comes to graves, burials, places where the dead were deposited, we are talking about people who had some social status in their societies that would allow them to be considered people and therefore had burials. Slaves, on the other hand, in past mentalities, being considered property when dead, would be discarded just as unwanted, broken or no longer useful objects would be. The great majority of people who were enslaved in the past, we do not know where their remains are, unfortunately, because they were not considered important enough, they were not considered people even, to the point of actually having a burial. Sadly, most of the, of the people that have been enslaved have disappeared from the archaeological context or the archaeological record. We know about their existence. There are documents talking about them, which is why we know, mostly after the colonial period and during the colonial period, that enslaved people were discarded like objects when they died, as European cities had specific regulations concerning the proper places where people would throw garbage, where people would throw broken objects that were not considered garbage, and where people would throw their dead slaves. In colonial archaeology, we do find the osteological remains of people that have been enslaved, because there was regulation to place their bodies in specific places, in mass graves, in pits. I, as an archaeologist based in Portugal, have been into such a horrible context, as you might imagine, quite horrible, of literally a pit from the 17th to the 18th century, where people would throw the bodies of their slaves, of other human beings who were considered property, and when dead, they no longer had any use. So it is documented the proper place to ditch the dead bodies of these persons, and because it is documented, we have found it. And, as you can imagine, it is horrible and it is the stuff of a nightmare. So, that's one thing that we should consider. 
in the so-called Viking Age, there may have been indeed people of sub-Saharan ancestry, but the likely scenario is that they were enslaved people, just like other Europeans and other Scandinavians, whose role in such a society of that time period were also to be enslaved, they were slaves. But their bodies are not found precisely because of these social notions of status. It is very hard and rare to find pre-colonial human osteological remains of people that have been enslaved. So, again, of all the individuals so far studied from these contexts and societies previously spoken, there are no evidences of individuals of sub-Saharan ancestry. We are talking about Scandinavia, right? So, why represent it in television series? Several TV and film productions have featured people of African descent in traditionally white characterizations, such as the god Heimdall in the, the, the Marvel Thor franchise, and the Greek hero Achilles in the Troy series. They represent the recent need for social inclusion of minorities in, in, in historically situations dominated by Eurocentrism. Thus, the Valhalla series, when representing a Jalfru, uh, and, and wife of an important leader in Norway, according to what you have told me, or a black man with the aristocracy in Novgorod, of the Rus, right? idealizes an ancient world with more social equality. And such social equality has been an important part for our modern societies to thrive. In this case, despite not being historically correct, fiction fulfills its role as a catalyst for transformation and criticism of the present. Inclusion of minorities in various fields of cinematography has helped to establish a more inclusive society, which in turn helps all people to be integrated. Clearly, there is a difference between history and fiction. However, just as being knowledgeable about history is important, so are these fiction productions to create social harmony or to present a critic and issues that must be addressed in order to achieve greater acceptance and understanding among human beings, promoting inclusion and cooperation. Besides, if people are watching these TV series as if it were a history documentary, therein lies one of the problems. Because these TV series are fiction, they are meant to be fiction, and not meant to be historically accurate for the sake of education, but rather to be entertainment and to also serve as important mechanisms of inclusion and to promote acceptance of human lives. These are human beings that have the same right to live as anybody else. That's common sense. And I think one of the other problems is also one of the, the things I have spoken of more recently, which is how the term Viking is applied and it is often applied wrongly, leading to several misconceptions and misunderstandings and doubts. Vikings were not a people, were not an ethnic group, but rather an occupation, mostly piracy and other activities through maritime means. But the term Viking in medieval literature had the same connotation as the word pirate has for us today. So in those terms, indeed there were or could have been black Vikings in the sense of pirates. Iceland and other places had several problems concerning Muslim Vikings, meaning Muslim pirates. In my own country, as an example, concerning these aspects we are talking about here, it is very well documented by both the Portuguese and the Scandinavian medieval literature the exploits of King Sigurd I of Norway. He was a Christian king of Norway who turned to going Viking all the way to the Holy Land in the First Crusade. And in the, the process he stopped by Portugal, helping the Portuguese in raiding and, and pillaging and killing M Muslims during the process of reconquest of the territory. <coughs> Sorry. And so, in the process, the Portuguese as well, as well turned to going Viking. Piracy. 
both to defend themselves against Scandinavian and Norman Vikings, but also joining and promoting piracy with them to conquer their other enemies. So literally, Portuguese Vikings. So it's also a question of how we wrongly apply the term Viking as if it were an ethnic group. Of course, you may argue that these TV series are not realistic, but they were not meant to be realistic in the first place. What we are watching is fiction. If we, if we want really realism concerning history, then we should be reading a history book or watching an actual historical documentary, not a fictional TV series. And I remind you, just because there is no proof, scientifically speaking, concerning the remains that have been studied thus far, as previously spo spoken, well, uh, as a patron of mine puts it, doesn't mean it was completely and utterly impossible for someone would, with sub-Saharan ancestry to have been in Scandinavia at these time periods. And therefore, it's a completely legitimate element to weave in a fictional modern story. We know of several non-European peoples of all sorts that have been trading with Scandinavians during the late Iron Age and the European Middle Ages. And just as Scandinavians were at places, so were others at Scandinavia, trading and living and interacting with such societies. Concerning these TV series, for those grown-up adults who find it absolutely outrageous, this subject of Black Vikings, ask yourself, does in fact the representation of non-white people, or rather the inclusion of black actors in these fictional narratives really causes you any harm? Are you really suffering any harmful effects from representations of a more inclusive society? Really. Sort out on your priorities and wait where your heart truly lies. Are your morals being determined by political ideologies or by your sense of empathy or lack thereof? Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. And as always, talk for it Thanks for today. Obrigado por hoje. Until we meet again, my dear friends.